Thanks, guys. Welcome to the final session of the 2021 Hypertension Control Summit. You know, whether you're joining us for the first time or have stuck with us through all of the sessions, we appreciate your participation and your engagement. My name is Larissa Jacobs, and I have the pleasure of bringing your, being your MC today. Um, a few reminders before we begin. Um, we're in a Zoom webinar, so all the participants are muted. You should see the speaker's video next to the slides and can adjust their relative size with the slider bar in between. Um, we'll use both the Q&A and the chat function today, so please use the Q&A function to ask questions of the speakers. You can um, upvote the questions you see in the Q&A that you also might want to ask, and we'll be using the chat function um, to drop links to key resources, and this is where we invite you to engage in discussion with other attendees. So please begin by introducing yourself with your name and your organization. And you can see right there in the chat box, we've got a little note about it dropping important links. Um, make sure you select all panelists and attendees from the drop down so everybody can see your chat. Um, all sessions are being recorded as we're being recorded right now and they'll be posted to the 2021 Texas Hypertension Control Summit Series webpage along with the slides. We'd like to begin by thanking the planning committee who worked diligently on this activity. And we'd like to thank each of the presenting organizations for their collaboration in bringing this event to life. So you can see them listed out right here on the slide. Um, we couldn't do this without you. We're so grateful. Thank you. Let's see the next slide. Now we'll take a look at today's agenda. Today's agenda will be slightly more relaxed as we can take time to celebrate the success of our health center's achievements in hypertension control across Texas. We will have a latest science feature and provide you with some guidance as you prepare for data submission in 2022. Please encourage and celebrate each other's success in the chat box. And now let's get the celebrations going. This is my favorite part. I love all the activity in the chat box. We're fortunate to have our very own Dr. Eduardo Sanchez here to give us a hypertension control science update and to help us recognize each of the 2021 Target VP awardees. They've worked hard today and we're so excited to have our very own Dr. Sanchez here to celebrate with us. We know he's gonna make it so much fun. You know, from 2001 to 2006, Dr. Sanchez served as Texas's Commissioner of Health overseeing statewide public health, public mental and substance use disorder programs. At the AHA, he provides medical leadership to target VP and serves as a principal investigator for the National Hypertension Control Initiative, providing technical assistance and training through an Office of Minority Health Collaboration to 350 HRSA funded health centers. So with that, I know you're excited and so am I. I'll ask you to please unmute yourself, Dr. Sanchez, and the virtual stage is yours. Thank you, Larissa, really appreciate it. Um, let me start by saying congratulations to all of y'all for uh, your efforts. Um, it's been a, 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 a long, strange trip, has it not, uh, the last 18 to 20 months. So very much appreciate all that y'all have done. Um, and I'm looking forward to the official recognition coming later. Um, I've been asked to talk a little bit about the science. Um, and so with no further ado, um, let's, you know what, there's a couple of things. One, I want to thank the planning committee. Awesome job. I want to thank um, the American Heart Association, American Medical Association for the work they do around um, blood pressure control. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't um, say DSHS, so good to be partnering with y'all, uh, the Department of State Health Services, um, my last um, government public service home and uh, something I'm really, really proud of. Um, uh, you know, at the end of the day, blood pressure control matters. Um, list after list after list of what are the things that, A, there's tremendous opportunity to do 
better on with a um, very, very significant return on investment. Um, and I'm not talking about financial return on investment. I'm talking about um, healthy, long lives uh, 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 return on investment. Blood pressure control is one of those things that is um, simple to do, um, which doesn't equal easy to do. Um, and uh, something that uh, we are so pleased that y'all are helping help us all get to this place of better blood pressure control. Blood pressure control equals almost immediate reduction or a change in the trajectory that individuals with high blood pressure were or are on um, in the course of maybe having a heart attack, stroke, heart failure. And if we can do anything to delay or prevent, that's awesome. I do, uh, so here as a uh, hypertension is a leading risk factor for cardiovascular disease has the highest population attributable fraction. It makes sense that we should be focusing on that. Next slide. What I wanted to do uh, today, just to sort of get us going is that the work we do is science-based. Uh, and the work that Target BP is about is translating that science into um, action, translating that science into how we do our work. Um, and so if you look at this late breaking science update slide, um, acting rapidly, um, a recent study uh, that's published in the journal, the American Heart Association, tracking blood pressure control performance and process metrics in 25 US health systems, the Pocornet Blood Pressure Control Laboratory. I've made it easy for you to figure out what is important. Um, so uh, the first bullet point is that there are, major opportunities to get blood pressure under control and reduce disparities, especially through consistent medication intensification. When I was commissioner of health, we used to talk about missed opportunities in the context of persons who were eligible right then and there to get a vaccine uh, to prevent a vaccine preventable disease and that opportunity not being taken. And this tells us that um, next bullet point that um, medication intensification only occurred in 12% of visits for patients with uncontrolled blood pressure, meaning that 88% of the time we missed an opportunity to do something that's going to change the trajectory that a person is on to potentially have a heart attack, stroke, or heart failure. Um, and then the third bullet is um, the, the science that's been emerging about the value of fixed dose combination medications, which make it easier for the patient, one pill a day, perhaps, um, and yet can get us more bang literally for that one pill because two pills at half dose seem to be more effective than one pill at double dose. So that's one, um, and there's a hyperlink to the actual article that you can read. Um, next slide um, is a different uh, recent publication um, in the journal Hypertension, uh, Medication Adherence and Blood Pressure Control. This is a scientific statement, um, which, I think reinforces some of the things that we've just been talking about. Um, so one of the recommendations is to prescribe fixed dose combination pills to simplify the medication regimen. Um, we know that it is easier, the less pills you have to take, the less times a day you have to take them, all equals higher likelihood of adherence. Um, and then um, the next bullet point is about how one might track um, information about A, what medication folks are on, and or the degree to which they're being taken and pharmacy refill databases are that. What's the medication? How often is it getting refilled? Is it being refilled um, you know, um, every month with 30 day supplies or not? Um, and then uh, the next bullet point is about SMBP. Uh, the National Hypertension Control Initiative is all about trying to better engage patients um, and management of high blood pressure by having them be a part of that blood pressure monitoring and measurement at home. And then lastly, um, helping patients with tools, um, lots of different tools, um, real-time counseling, open-ended discussion, visual aids, patient diaries, which in my mind includes the use of technologies that provide those visual aids and or uh, nudges to do X, Y, or Z, all things that are recommended based on the science. So I'm gonna stop there and hand this back to Larissa for uh, the rest of the program.
Thank you so much, Dr. Sanchez. You know, we would now like to invite another familiar face to the stage to help present the Target BP Awards with 25 plus years of working from bedside to boardroom, Allison Smith currently serves in a jointly held position with the American Heart Association and the American Medical Association as program director for the AHA AMA initiative to control blood pressure. She has worked for 15 years as a nurse, administrator, and consultant in hospitals across the country, including a top 100 community teaching hospital and as an assistant editor of the journal Nursing Economics. We are so grateful to have her insight and expertise in support of the Target BP Initiative and the Texas Hypertension Control Summit. So please unmute yourself, Allison, and join Dr. Sanchez on the virtual stage. Thanks for that welcome, Larissa. It's great to be here again with you all through this Hypertension Summit series, and particularly today as we celebrate the accomplishments of so many across Texas. Um, as, as Dr. Sanchez said, in a year like no other, uh, we were just delighted to see how many organizations sustained or increased their commitment to hypertension control through participation um, in the annual awards program. So with that, uh, we will dive into um, the awards and celebrating individual organizations organizations. Uh, that I was, love that curtain. That's I, was, nice. <laughs> I feel underdressed. That was very exciting. That's right. Um, I don't have my tuxedo on. <laughs> right. <laughs> We'll begin with the Gold Plus uh, awardees. Uh, this is a new award launched um, this particular year, celebrating organizations who, uh, who achieved a control rate, a blood pressure control rate of 70% uh, or greater, and uh, also achieved at least four out of the six evidence-based blood pressure activities. And so uh, we're really excited to see how many organizations, um, again, continue data submission of their control rates, but also attested to these important evidence-based practices. So with that, we will dive into the first uh, region's awardees of Gold Plus, Dr. Sanchez. So um, in the Austin Central Texas region, um, Central Texas Veterans Healthcare System um, is being recognized at Gold Plus in six locations in Austin, Brownwood, Bryan, Cedar Park, Temple, and Waco. Congratulations, y'all. In the Corpus Christi South Gulf, Gulf, Texas region, we want to recognize Coastal Cardiology Association for their Gold Plus achievement. Congrats. So, you know, um, uh, a little while ago, I stepped away because I was trying to find something to make a lot of noise. Um, but I couldn't find anything. So that's probably good for y'all. Um, uh, you know, a horn, a harmonica, whatever. Um, so I may throw in a woohoo here and there. So um, in the Dallas, Fort Worth, North Texas region, uh, the following organizations uh, have achieved um, and are being recognized for Gold Plus um, level of um, target BP work. Uh, Grace Community Clinic, HHM Health, Mission East Dallas, Resource Care, uh, VA North Texas Healthcare System Woven Health Clinic. Congratulations, y'all. In the Houston and Southeast Texas region, we want to congratulate the Advanced Endocrinology and Diabetes Clinic, Baylor St. Luke's Medical Group, Encompass Health Rehabilitation Hospital of Cyprus, and at Houston Methodist Primary Care Group, the Long Meadow, Montgomery, Riverstone, Skirlock 1130, Sugarland, and Willowbrook 390 locations, as well as Kelsey Care Advantage, Kelsey Siebold Clinic, and Westlake Health Center. Congratulations. Moving on to the gold level recognition. Uh, this is organizations who have achieved, again, a 70% or greater uh, control rate of their hypertension uh, patient population. This is a remarkable achievement, particularly in the context of a pandemic. It, this is really an amazing achievement. With that, we'll go to our awardees of the gold status level. Dr. Sanchez. In the Dallas-Fort Worth, North Texas region, um, gold recognition was achieved by Hope Clinic, Southwestern Health Resources, and Texas Health Resources. Congratulations. 
In the Houston and Southeast Texas region, the Harris Health System had several uh, award winners, the Cypress Health Center, El Franco Lee Health Center, Gulfgate Health Center, Squatty Lions Health Center, Bobona Health Center, also the Interfaith Community Clinic, and the UT Physicians Family Practice at Bayshore, and the UT Physicians Multi-Specialty at both the International District Family Medicine Practice and the Victory Internal Medicine Practice locations. Congratulations. Moving on to the silver awardees, these are organizations who attested to four of six of the evidence-based blood pressure measurement uh, activities. Uh, again, really focused on evidence-based practices with equipment validation and calibration, staff training and testing, the use of measurement protocols and visual reminders for proper blood pressure measurement technique. With that, we'll turn to the next slide, Dr. Sanchez. Allison, let me just say that the silver level is the recognition that um, you first gotta be doing the right thing before you're gonna realize the right outcomes. Um, and so we wanted to acknowledge that uh, there are organizations that are wanting to do the right, wanting to get to those outcomes, but are wanting to put in place the right thing. So uh, just, just saying that. Um, uh, and so uh, in Austin, Central Texas, um, uh, the two organizations, I think two, maybe one, uh, but the organizations that have reached um, silver level or have attained silver level um, recognition, uh, Central Texas Veterans Healthcare System in Palestine and Health for All. Or it might be Palestine Health for All. I don't know, somebody let me know. Um, and notice, I pronounced it the right way. I've been to Palestine. I caught that. Uh, in the next uh, Corpus Christi South Gulf, Texas region, the Christus Spohn Health System FHCs and Community Action Corporation of South Texas. Congratulations on your silver achievement. In the Dallas-Fort Worth, North Texas region, uh, the following organizations have achieved silver level recognition. Um, Arlington Community Health Center, Brother Bill's Helping Hand, LBU Community Clinic, full disclosure, my wife is on the board of formerly known Los Barrios Unidos, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Family Clinic, DBA, Foremost Family Health Centers, Northside Community Health Center, Southeast Community Health Center. Congratulations, DFW North Texas Region Silver Recognees. Next in the Houston Southeast Texas region, we want to congratulate Avenue 360 Health and Wellness, Baylor Medicine, Harris County Public Health, Houston Methodist Physician Organization, and several locations of the Houston Methodist Primary Care Group, including Baytown, Bel Air, Brooks Street, Clear Lake, El Camino, French Quarter, Friendswood, the Internal Medicine Group at 1950, and Katie West Houston. Congratulations for your silver achievement. Um, continuing, I think continuing with Houston, Southeast Texas region, um, many locations of Houston Methodist primary care group, Kingsland, Kingwood, League Line, Magnolia, Memorial, Memorial Green, Mount Bellevue, Pearland, Rayford, Sienna Plantation, Skinner, Southside Place, Spring Valley. Congratulations, Houston Methodist primary group. Congratulations and thank you. And continuing on uh, with this remarkable system-wide commitment to blood pressure control, the Houston Methodist Primary Care Group also celebrated silver status among the Sweetwater, the Heights, the Woodlands uh, at MOB 1550 and MOB 2, the Woodlands Sterling Ridge, Tomball, Town Lake, Tuscan Lake, West University, and Willowbrook 400. Congratulations. Continuing the Houston Southeast Texas region, uh, Legacy Community Health um, has achieved silver level recognition um, uh, in the following locations, Deer Park Center, Baker Ripley, Fifth Ward Lions, Maple Ridge, Montrose, North Line, San Jacinto, Santa Clara. In addition, Lone Star Family Health Center, Memorial Herman Group, uh, Memor M Memorial Herman Medical Group, Pasadena Health Center, and San Jose Clinic all achieved silver level recognition. 
congratulations and thank you. Moving to the Rio Grande Valley, South Texas region, we wanna congratulate Gateway Community Health Center, South Texas Rural Health Services, Sui Clinica and United Medical Centers. Congratulations on your silver award. Moving to the participant level, we, we really want to recognize this year uh, organizations who remained committed to blood pressure control uh, regardless of their uh, ability to achieve high control rates or implement evidence-based blood pressure measurement activities. The fact that you are measuring your control rates and looking at your blood pressure uh, activities just really uh, reinforces the, the commitment that is required long term um, to achieve sustained improvement. We really thank you for your participation this year. And with that, we'll turn to our list of participant awardees with Dr. Sanchez. Yeah, let me just add, Allison, that um, I think your point is well taken. That pesky thing called COVID has really, really made things difficult in all settings that are trying to provide healthcare um, in waves and fits and starts. Um, uh, you know, I wanna thank, I, I presume uh, virtually every one uh, of the health centers that or organizations that are um, receiving recognition for blood pressure control are engaged in COVID management, COVID vaccination. So thank you for that. And I think I would reiterate, I wanna reiterate what Allison is saying is that our feeling is that um, this has been a pause um, we are laying in place the foundation um, for us to uh, get firmly grounded um, and begin again to improve blood pressure control um, in the state of Texas. So uh, without any further ado, participant level uh, recognition um, is goes to Lone Star Circle of Care in the Austin Central Texas region. In the Corpus Christi South Gulf, Texas region, we wanna recognize Amistad Community Health Center for their participation. Thank you and congrats. Houston Southeast Texas region, El Centro de Corazón, uh, congratulations. Um, and then a number of locations of the Harris Health System, Acres Home Health Center, Aldine Health Center, Baytown Health Center, Casa de Amigos Health Center, Danny Jackson Health Center, Martin Luther King Jr. Health Center, Northwest Health Center, Setagast Health Center, Smith Clinic, Strawberry Health Center. Congratulations and thank you. More awardees from the Houston Southeast Texas region include Spring Branch Community Health Center, the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston, Tamagua Healthcare Ministries, UT Physicians Center for Healthy Aging in Bel Air, the UT Physicians Family Medicine at Texas Medical Center, the, as well as the Texas or UT Physicians Family Practice in Bel Air, the UT Physicians Internal Medicine at the Texas Medical Center, the General Internal Medicine Practice, UT Physicians Multi Specialty at Bel Air and Family Medicine, and the UT Physicians Multi Specialty in Bel Air and in Internal Medicine. Congratulations for your commitment and participation. Thank you. Keeping on in Houston Southeast Texas region, um, a number of UT Physicians Multi Specialty locations, Cinco Ranch in Family Medicine. Greens Family Medicine and Internal Medicine, Jensen Internal Medicine, Rosenberg Family Medicine, Siena Village Family Medicine, The Heights Family Medicine and Internal Medicine, and then Vecino Health Centers. We just want to congratulate everyone again for these remarkable uh, accomplishments, your continued commitment, and we hope that you all will continue participating in Target BP in the years to come. I'll turn it to Dr. Sanchez for some concluding remarks and celebration. So imagine um, confetti, uh, bottles of champagne, um, but non-alcoholic champagne opening up and being spread amongst all of y'all. Um, imagine the noise, woohoo, yay! clapping, um, really uh, uh, wish we could all be together um, and we could um, feed off of uh, the energy that comes from being together, applauding one another, 
um, and uh, patting each other on the back and hugging one another for uh, the work that's been done over the year. Um, again, uh, this has been a really nice set of um, events over the course of several months. Congratulations and thank you to all of y'all. Uh, we'll be back in 2022. Um, hopefully we'll be able to set our sights with much less distraction on blood pressure control. Uh, and um, on behalf of the American Heart Association leadership, American Medical Association, I'm gonna throw in um, the, the Department of State Health Services. Um, thank you for what you do. Thanks to the planning committee for putting this event together. And thanks for the staff that behind the scenes makes it seem like this is a really, really easy thing to do for Allison and myself. So thank you, congratulations. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Happy New Year, because we're close. We probably won't see one another again. Well, thank you so much. Um, Allison, Dr. Sanchez, you make everything so much fun. And I'm right there with you when I say congratulations to all of the 2021 Target BP awardees. You certainly worked hard and your patients are benefiting from your hard work. We are so grateful for your work to strive for 70% hypertension control throughout the state of Texas. And it's so exciting to see you continue to raise the bar. And thank you to Dr. Sanchez and Allison once again for not only presenting these awards, but for your support and your leadership of the hypertension control efforts across Texas. Now, um, we are going to continue in the spirit of continuing to improve hypertension control. We turn to Liz Montgomery, our outpatient healthcare data analyst to provide you with an overview and some important updates as you prepare for Target BP data submission 2022. Take it away and unmute yourself, Liz. Thank you so much. Virtual stage is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Liz Montgomery. I am a joint employee of the American Heart Association and American Medical Association, and I oversee the annual recognition data submission process, as well as the technical development of the online data platform. Whether or not you're participating in Target BP already, you likely have data about your individual organization's progress towards hypertension control. And regardless of where your control rate is, that data is extremely valuable. We can't know where we're going if we don't know where we've been. Today, I wanna to recognize all the organizations that have participated in Target BP this year and to do a quick overview of how you too can take that next step and submit your organization's data for Target BP to be recognized and measure our collective progress. Do you wanna to move to the next slide? I wanna echo first the sentiments that were just shared by Allison Eduardo. It was amazing to see so many organizations step up to submit data, which we know will help us understand the ongoing pandemic's effects on chronic conditions. Texas had an excellent showing last year, which you just heard, with over or with 130 organizations submitting data. That means that over 11% of all organizations that submitted data for Target BP were from here in Texas. Additionally, we had more than 40 organizations submit for our other outpatient initiatives focused on cholesterol and diabetes. Thank you so much for your work this year. If you wanna to move to this month, all of our gold awardees across programs will be published nationally again in an ad in Modern Healthcare. We'll have a digital version of this same ad to make sharing easy amongst your colleagues and organization. The AHA and AMA want to recognize your commitment to improving blood pressure control and continue to celebrate your achievements. When you submit the program data required for recognition, your organization or organizations, if you're submitting for multiple sites, will be recognized on the participant, silver, gold, or gold plus level, and will receive a host of external facing benefits, such as listing on AHA and AMA's website, inclusion in a national press release, and more listed on this slide here. Beyond recognizing your hard work and inspiring others, your data also helps to collectively inform our understanding of how our Texas participants are doing with hypertension control. Combining this data illuminates trends within Texas or smaller regional cohorts, as well as across different types of organizations and nationally 
quantify our work and improve the program over time. We've covered the why. Now let's go down to the how. The data submission period for 2022 recognition will open on January 1st, 2022 and close on May 27th. Can we uh, move to the next slide, please? So this shows the data to submit that information. It includes information on your adult patient population, the number of providers and patient breakdowns by payer and by demographics. The main data are the numerator and denominator of the controlling high blood pressure measure to capture how many patients with hypertension had their most recent blood pressure under 140 over 90 in 2021. And the coming slides will highlight some updates from last year and break down how to achieve our four levels of recognition, participant, silver, gold, or gold plus. First, let's cover there are two steps to submit data for recognition. Can we advance to the next slide, please? All right, so the first step is to register. This enables us to create a profile and user login for you to go into the online data platform. If you're new to submitting data for Target VP, please go to heart.org backslash register my outpatient org to register your organization. If you've submitted before and already have a profile, don't worry, we're not gonna make you register again. You can skip straight to entering data, which we'll cover next. One note is that one registration equates to one potential award. So if you want your whole system and each of its individual locations to all be listed individually and each receive recognition, you'll need to submit registration forms for each of them. If you want to register five or more sites at a time, there is a multi-site submission process in that registration link that'll save you some time. Also note that if you're looking to submit data for our other outpatient recognition programs, Check Change Control Cholesterol and Target Type 2 Diabetes, the process is identical. You can register for these programs in the same form as Target VP with just a few additional clicks. Once receive your user credentials by email, you'll head to our online data platform. New program form will be available starting on January 1st. At that time, you'll navigate to program forms, hit add new, enter 2021 because you're entering data from this calendar year 2021, fill in all the fields and save and exit. The deadline to enter and finalize your data is Friday, May 27th at 1159 Eastern time. The minute after that, a snapshot of all of the data in the platform is taken to determine every organization's award level. Just to reiterate, it is a two-step process. So first register through the link on the left, receive your user credentials within a few days, and then you'll enter your data into the online platform, which is previewed on the right. If you've submitted target VP data in the past and already have a login, you don't need to re-register. Just go into step two, and go ahead and log in. We also have a speedier way that I mentioned before for organizations to submit data for multiple individual sites in one swoop through our self-service upload tool. This tool allows you to type your data into a spreadsheet and upload that versus typing them each into the platform. If you're interested in submitting data this route, please reach out to us at bit.ly slash AQ contact us. And that is our general contest contact us forms, you can send any questions that way. Moving on, let's talk about some of the updates that we have this year. There is a new question regarding race and ethnicity counts. It reads as follows. How many of your total adult population, ages 18 plus, self-identify as the following race and ethnicity? The table then breaks down that information into fields following HRSA's uniform data system reporting requirements for 2021 health centers. If this feels somewhat familiar to you, it's because it replaces the prevalence estimator, which had a similar field, but also required breakdown of sex and age. By choosing to update to the UDS table this year, we're moving from 45 fields that need to be completed to just the 15 shown here. We're hoping that that will be a welcome change as it will uh, ease the burden on data submitters time. Now let's talk about how to achieve the different levels of awards that were announced earlier. Our participant award criteria for this year 
um, the award will be changing a little bit. This criteria is if the organization did not meet 70% blood pressure control rate and attested to less than four of six evidence-based blood pressure activities in 2021. As highlighted here, we've modified the criteria and this award will now only be available for first time data submitters. That means if you've previously submitted data in any year, you're no longer going to be eligible for the participant award. We hope that many organizations who did achieve participant award this year will move into the silver category for next year. Our silver award recognizes practices that have achieved less than 70% blood pressure control rate, but have achieved at least four of the six evidence-based blood pressure measurement activities. Both gold and gold plus awardees recognize organizations that achieved higher than 70% blood pressure control rate, with gold plus our highest award acknowledging those that also completed at least four of six blood pressure measurement activities. So moving on, we don't want a technical glitch or a forgotten field to block you from being recognized. So some quick reminders, enter your 2021 data by Friday, May 27th, but the earlier the better. If you're a new, register early. It does take a few days to get your profile set up. And when you're entering data, you can use our resources for full instructions. The links on the screen will take you to this year's resources, but they'll be updated soon. Remember to complete all fields and all tasks. That means no blank. Enter zeros to represent where you don't have patient data. And check the data entry complete checkbox when you're finished. Make sure that, that your data is saved before midnight on May 27th. I know that I can count on each of you. Submit your data to be recognized and help Texas measure our progress. You can start now by watching our Navigating the Data platform video and reviewing our unofficial data collection worksheet for next year. Please be sure to keep an eye out for additional 2022 recognition resources that are coming soon in December of this year. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions, if we um, did have any questions pop up in the Q&A, or if you have any new ones, please feel free to plug them in there and I will be happy to answer them. Thank you so much, and I, I hope uh, hope to see everyone submit data for 2021 next year. Thank you, Liz, for providing an overview for those who may not be familiar with data submission and for sharing those important updates um, for those looking to continue their success. Um, it's a journey, and we really appreciate your help. Um, now that you have the overview and updates, we invite Allison back to the virtual stage for a reminder on taking next steps in controlling hypertension with evidence-based activities. Allison, unmute yourself. Thank you so much, Larissa. And Liz, thank you for that overview. I really appreciate you reminding everyone of uh, the opportunity ahead, as well as some of the important changes to look forward to. As Liz mentioned, we are uh, evolving our uh, eligibility criteria and we really want to focus on silver, gold and gold plus um, awards going forward, um, encouraging everybody to stay with us on this journey and improving their control rates and their evidence based blood pressure measurement activities. So what I really I would like to focus on are those those evidence based blood pressure measurement activities so that everyone who was perhaps in the participant status this past year who we just recognized for your commitment can move forward into silver. So I wanna highlight a few opportunities in, in that regard. On the next slide, we'll focus on the first two of the six uh, criteria. The first is um, ensuring that you're focused on really the accuracy of your blood pressure measurement devices, both in terms of calibration and validation um, and the difference between the two. For calibration, we wanna ensure that all blood pressure devices are calibrated per manufacturer's recommendation. Um, and that varies based on what type of device that you have. If you have uh, aneroid devices or if you have oscillometric devices, uh, it vary, the frequency with which you have to uh, calibrate them varies. We encourage you to contact your biomed team um, for guidance and support in that regard. Uh, the device manufacturer, if there are any questions or concerns that you have about that, or perhaps a third party bi biomed uh, provider if that expertise doesn't reside within your organization. Uh, and we 
we will be providing more guidance and technical assistance and FAQs um, in that regard, uh, should you encounter specific questions. But the criteria for um, calibrating your devices is outlined very clearly in the BP scientific statement that AHA released in 2019 uh, with handheld Android devices requiring uh, calibration every two to four weeks. Um, and that's an example of the most frequent calibration required to remain accurate uh, as compared to an oscillometric device that may require calibration every one to two years on average, depending on the manufacturer's recommendation. Um, it's so important. If our devices are inaccurate, we're not treating the right number. Um, it's the difference between a diagnosis or not, um, treatment intensification or not. And so it's really important to get um, the device accuracy in place. Related to calibration is validation. And we really encourage all organizations as the guidelines suggests um, to, to use devices that have been validated for clinical accuracy. The criteria for this award is that you look at the validated device listing, the US blood pressure validated device listing, which is relatively new, um, or another uh, internationally recognized source. And we have some examples of those on the Target BP website, but to see if your equipment is validated for clinical use. And that uh, has to do with the way in which the manufacturer originally uh, developed and te independently tested uh, the technology. Um, and so that list, the new list on the VDL is growing uh, routinely. Uh, we just added uh, many more devices this past week. In fact, uh, the functionality of the website has been enhanced to make uh, searching and looking at device characteristics easier, and that will continue to be enhanced. Um, I should note too that uh, they just uh, approved criteria for the validation of wrist cuff devices, which should only be used in very specific circumstances when upper arm devices are not possible. But we anticipate seeing some wrist devices that have been validated for clinical accuracy be added to this list in the future. So those are some uh, tips and recommendations on the first two criteria. For the next two criteria, it really focuses on not on the equipment, but on your team, your care team. And Again, the evidence recommends that staff, are all healthcare professionals, are trained and tested in blood pressure measurement every six to 12 months. This is a skill that we learn in our initial training and oftentimes are never taught again or reminded of again. It's something that we do uh, mil you know, many, many times a day. And we want to ensure that blood pressure measurement is accurate for every patient, every time. Again, we know that measurement errors can uh, lead to anywhere from a five to 10 to 20 to 50 millimeter error, depending upon the, the uh, positioning um, error that's, that's uh, involved in the measurement or whether or not a cuff is placed over clothing or the wrong size cuff um, is used. Again, making the difference between a diagnosis or not, a treatment intensification or not. So what we've outlined here are the existing and new resources to help you train and test your staff. We have uh, for more than a year uh, had the free access to the blood pressure measurement um, webinar where you could get enduring uh, CME and CE credit. Uh, there's also uh, the, the Achieving Accuracy BP measurement module. We just launched this year a watch party toolkit that the AHA community impact staff have in their toolbox to work with health centers across the country to help uh, tra a training, uh, support a training activity and a skill testing activity uh, to help you get to silver. And we have long uh, leaned upon the, the uh, support of the Technique Quick Check tool, which is a very easy, a simple way to assess staff skills. Um, can they translate the knowledge into that action? Have you set them up um, for uh, success and consistent practice? And so we encourage you to continue to use that or a similar tool um, to validate uh, skills um, in your health centers uh, every day. With that, we'll move to the last two criteria. Um, really focused on the systems of care um, and the environmental cues that help us practice accurate blood pressure measurement every day. Um, the first is using a blood pressure measurement protocol to consistently obtain accurate and representative blood pressure measurements. And that might include doing a confirmatory or repeat measurement if a patient's initial blood pressure is elevated in, in the health center. Um, or it could be using ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, ABPM, which is the 24-hour continuous monitor, 
or using SMBP, self-measured blood pressure, where a patient obviously is monitoring at home. Any one of those mechanisms help us to obtain a sampling of blood pressure measurements uh, with which to make clinical diagnostic and treatment decisions. And then the last of the six criteria are, is, uh, I, I suppose, a seemingly low-hanging fruit um, to hang a, a positioning graphic in your health center next to every place where blood pressure is measured. Um, and I know some organizations have fire code that prohibits or, or policies that prohibit hanging items um, on the wall. Here's some other creative ideas that you might consider. Um, posting, you know, framing or putting on a bulletin board, using a screen, uh, that image as a screensaver, laminating and hanging um, uh, an image like that from a BP pump stand. Those are just a few ideas. There are other graphics like this. The idea here is to provide a reminder to your team, but also to engage patients by uh, them being exposed to this information. Um, they are better able to literally position themselves um, and be partners in your care um, and hopefully absorb some of that learning uh, if they are gonna be doing self-monitoring themselves. So those are that's a very quick overview um, of the six evidence-based blood pressure measurement uh, criteria and the tools uh, at your disposal uh, to achieve that criteria, again, between now and the end of the calendar year. In the same way that your 2021 data about blood pressure control um, is what is used for your 22, 2022 data submission, so are uh, the attestation activities. Um, are, if you have achieved these activities during the calendar year of 2021, then you would attest to those activities when you submit your data in 2022. So between now and the end of the year, um, hopefully you can take advantage of these resources um, and sprint to silver. Thank you all for your continued commitment to Target BP. Thank you to our partners, our multi-sector partners across Texas, um, both uh, in terms of the healthcare organizations, but also um, the State Department of Health and our uh, partners um, in stroke, and pre stroke prevention and control. I will turn it back to Larissa for our wrap up. Thank you all very much. Well, thank you so much, Allison. Um, those are really important steps to help us all march toward hypertension control. So really appreciate you. You know, this leads us to our call to action. Throughout the summit series, we've invited you to take action related to the topics discussed. So we invite you to reach out to your local and regional AHA staff for support. Thank you, a nice slide there. Um, and the resources related to all things hypertension control. These staff leaders are ready to connect and collaborate with you. Additionally, you can reach out directly to Target BP program support by using the contact us form. Thank you for putting that in the chat. So in closing, um, we invite you to complete a survey of the activities of the 2021 Hypertension Control Summit. We ask that you please use about the next five minutes to provide valuable feedback to help guide content and to form and the format of future sessions. We'll drop a link into the chat, um, a reminder that the survey is anonymous. So you can say what you really think, and we do read responses and take them into consideration. And Special thanks to those of you who have already filled out these uh, surveys along the way. So all of the recordings and slides will be posted to the 21 Texas Hypertension Summit page where you went to register. Please give us a couple of weeks for the page to be fully updated. And uh, if you're interested in getting at the state level, please head over to the uh, Department of State Health Services Heart Disease Program website and reach out to Cassandra Hunt. Um, to join a hypertension collaborative in your region. Um, I know I really enjoy attending those meetings and every single time I go, I learn so much from our experts. Um, finally, we want to remind everyone about the Texas Hypertension Control Learning Collaboratives welcome applications for this exciting opportunity to build a, a self-measured blood pressure monitoring program, SMBP program. So please review the application requirements and reach out uh, should you have any questions or concerns. Thank you again for all of your participation and engagement. Please head over to fill out the survey. We look forward to seeing you next year. And again, congratulations to all. You've worked hard. You deserve a big applause. Thank you.
in a loose sleep. One sheep, two sheep, cone, cuckoo, and cookie is cool key. But I'm actually weirder than you think. This feeling inside my bones It goes electric wavy when I turn it on Off from my city, off from my home We're flying up, no ceiling when we in our zone I got that sunshine in my pocket You got that good soul in my feet I feel that hot blood in my body When it drops, ooh can't take my eyes off of it Moving so phenomenally You more like the way we rock it So don't stop it And under the lights When everything goes Nowhere to hide When I'm getting you close When we move Well you already know So just imagine Nothing I can see but you When you dance, dance, dance Feel a good, good creeping up on 